Turning to France now, where President Emmanuel Macron has just announced a tax cut of 5 billion euros. It was one of several new reforms and a victory of sorts for les Gilets jaunes, the yellow vest protesters who first hit the streets almost six months ago, demonstrating over the price of fuel, the cost of living and tax fairness. Macron initially tried to appease the movement by boosting the minimum wage, but it didn't work. And when that fire consumed part of Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral, and Macron led the fundraising efforts for the reconstruction, he played right into the protesters' hands. Those multi-million dollar donations from billionaires, which happen to be tax deductible, underlined the issues of tax inequality and the government's priorities. The media are more than just a subplot in this. Protesters complain about the underreporting of police violence, the sensationalizing of the demonstrations. And reporters have been restricted, manhandled by police and subjected to arrest. So the Yellow Vests are producing their own coverage, live streaming across social networks. The Listening Post's Marcelo Pizarro now on the tussle between the media, the state, and les gilets jaunes. Après plus de cinq mois de mobilisation, nouveau samedi de violence à Paris. C'est un mouvement euh, social et politique inédit, les Gilets jaunes, et historique. Parce qu'on euh, n'est pas comme dans un mouvement classique où il y a des organisateurs bien identifiés, un système. Ils avaient euh, établi de leur autonomie. C'était une mise en scène sans metteur en scène. Et l'on découvre dans ces blocages des manifestants avec un nouveau visage. Après un petit moment de sympathie, de curiosité, a très vite épousé le regard du pouvoir. Un camion de gendarmerie attaqué ce matin sur les champs élysées Qui a creusé cet antagonisme entre les gilets jaunes et puis les journalistes qui essayaient de comprendre un phénomène mais qui souvent le caricaturaient et souvent même le diffamer. Sur le fait de savoir si le mouvement des Gilets jaunes avait libéré une parole antisémite. Mais c'est qu'on a peut-être un peu oublié d'où venait en fait le vrai pouvoir en France. Il vient du peuple. Et puis, force est de constater qu'on est, est quatre mois plus tard et que les, les manifestations se poursuivent. The Yellow Vest call it Act 23, the 23rd consecutive week of protests across France. The numbers on the streets were boosted in the aftermath of the Notre Dame fire and the billions of dollars that flooded in for reconstruction. The demonstrators who first took to the streets and roundabouts over the rising price of fuel before raising other economic issues are now targeting institutions they say are protecting the rich and powerful at the expense of the people. They reserve a special place on their placards for the police and their sometimes brutal response as well as for journalists, some of whom have been attacked by protesters. La colère. The protesters' anger towards the media is understandable, but it cannot justify violence or hatred of all media, because this ends up being a hatred of democracy. Democracy is about respecting the media, even when you don't like what the media says. Of course, there was a strong grievance when the Yellow Vest movement began, that the media was not reporting their side of the story, most notably with regard to police violence. Today, journalism is a profession that stands discredited by the Yellow Vests and wider French society. Here at France Info, we are lucky enough to have great proximity to the parts of France that accuse journalists of only covering Paris and the middle and upper classes and of forgetting those sections of society that feel disowned and invisible. When the protests began, we covered it like all the social movements that have come before it. Why are they angry? What is the response from politicians? The protesters clearly showed that as long as they weren't being heard, they wouldn't stop. Their main message was, nobody is listening to us, nobody ever has. We are the voices you've been deaf to for the past 10, 20, 30 years. And this completely changes the way we have to cover things. The 24-hour news channel Ansora Dubois reports for, BFM, is the most widely watched in France. It's also the journalistic bête noire of the Yellow Vests movement. Among the complaints over BFM's treatment of their story are that it's been sensationalized, that protesters have been criminalized, and that instances of protester violence have been overstated. 
BFM TV, vraiment, c'est le summum de l'hypocrisie médiatique. Alors, euh, c'est vraiment aussi le summum, euh, je dirais, de, cette, euh, de ce pont qui existe entre les puissances politiques, les puissances financières et le traitement médiatique qui est fait. Pour nous, Gilets jaunes, on a compris une chose. Dans l'actuel combat contre l'oligarchie française, parce qu'on combat une oligarchie, c'est comme ça qu'on les nomme, euh, les médias sont importants, c'est la colonne vertébrale de ce système. BFM TV journalists have faced aggression from demonstrators. They were even attacked live on air once. And the yellow vests have also taken to protesting outside BFM TV's offices. However, the French media's credibility problems go beyond the Yellow Vest story, and they're quantifiable. This past January, one month into the protests, La Croix, a national Catholic newspaper, published a poll. When asked whether their journalists were independent, able to resist pressure brought by political parties, 69% of respondents said no. That's more than two-thirds of French news consumers. French journalists are just like American ones when Donald Trump came to power. They live in a bubble. They're oblivious to a whole section of French society, since they're essentially part of a small milieu that huddles in on itself. They only see and analyze this narrow sector of French public opinion, leaving the rest out. The hatred of the media is not something that's particularly unique to the Gilets jaunes. It's universal within French society. I want to be clear that journalists are doing their jobs. They don't need to be told how to do it. We aren't deaf to criticism. After all, we're a community riddled with self-doubt, always reassessing ourselves more than other professions. What has happened now is that the polemics on the media have reached a degree of intensity seldom seen before. So the Yellow Vests have turned to alternative forms of media. The demonstrations are routinely live-streamed by the Yellow Vests themselves, as well as by video publishers like Brut and Taranis News, who've racked up millions of views. It's an approach that's put them at odds with the police. Gaspard Glance, the founder of Taranese News, was arrested at last Saturday's protest, ostensibly for an obscene gesture at the police, and is banned from attending further protests until his hearing in October. Extremely puissant, I can tell you, very toxic. On TV, RT France, a news channel bankrolled by the Russian government, has reportedly quadrupled its French audience through its coverage of the Yellow Vest protests. RT has been dedicated to this story, providing the kinds of comprehensive coverage its backers at the Kremlin would be unlikely to tolerate if the protests were happening in Moscow or St. Petersburg. Unfortunately, we've seen a lot of criticism on RT France even before the channel was launched. In fact, RT France is a French channel with French journalists and they do their job. Every Saturday we basically go into the streets and we have live transmissions and we give the floor to people who come over. And with the other media, even the headlines in the beginning of the movement were more like the Gilets jaunes are either extreme right or extreme left. Now I think the situation is changing because the media is trying to catch up. But I think the moment was lost. That's why they turn into media like ours. Russia today, is a media of power. Russia today represents Russian state power, even if French journalists work there. Make no mistake, it's a channel controlled by the Russian government, so it certainly has its own ideological and political agenda, and that's their right. But it's our job as journalists to provide people with useful information, not just feed them what they want to hear, echo their opinion. When it comes to social movements, few can match the impact of France's yellow vests. Just weeks after the protests began, President Macron pledged to increase the minimum wage. This week he went further, a raft of concessions including 5 billion euros in tax cuts. En réduisant significativement l'impôt sur le revenu. They were the result of his grand débat a national policy debate and a direct response to the Yellow Vests. The other debate the protesters have provoked is about the media establishment, 
questions about media ownership, how journalists cover protests, why the levels of trust in French media are so low, questions that, because of the yellow vests, are more visible now than ever before whether on the streets les médias sont trop financés par des pouvoirs de l'argent or in the studios pourquoi certains gilets jaunes haïssent-ils les médias 